a couple of weeks ago when Tagma came up with another tutorial, uh, link is up there, on how to create a bubble deformer in Houdini. Uh, the amazing Simon Fiedler did it, and I'll have all these details in the description text below. Today we are going to do something very similar to that, maybe identical, it depends, and we are going to use the target effector as a deformer in repel mode, and you'll be surprised as to what you can do with that. The main difference between a displacer, the typical deformation we use to create these kind of things, and what I'm creating today, the bubble deformation, is that in the case of the displacer, what happens is that all the points are moved in a straight line along the normal of the point. What we're going to do today is we're going to use some other method to create this concave surface between these and you can see that the bubble shapes are much more interesting than the typical displacement. Let's open a new document and uh, let me use from the tools the doodle Doodle Paint, so I can draw a sketch here and explain exactly what we are going to do. Now usually, when you have a surface and uh, you use some sort of noise or any other way to deform it, everything moves upwards from that surface. So you'll get bumps that look like this. What we are going to do is take the surface and put some points underneath it these points are going to move closer and further away, so they're going to oscillate up and down. And what we're going to do is move the surface in the direction of that point from the point of the surface. So this point here is going to move in this direction. This point here is going to move in this direction. And that point there is going to move in that direction. So we are going to create something like this. And this is basically the effect of a bubble rather than a bump or a displacement. So now I can go and remove my doodle and we are going to start by creating the original points by creating a sphere, setting it to icosahedron and I'm going to turn on my grow shading lines and I'm going to change the number of segments to 24. Then I'm going to use a matrix object in object mode and this is going to reference the actual sphere and I want one point on each and every one of these vertices. So let me go and set the distribution to vertex which is basically another name for a point and to start adding some sort of randomness I'm going to use the matrix with a MoGraph push apart effector over here, push apart and uh, what I'm going to do is change some parameters over here. I'm going to set it to 15, just so we can have a slight variation in the position of our points. You don't have to do this, but I just like it because it gives me a nice little effect. Now, one thing I like to do is just put things in a certain order, and it helps me work a bit better. I'm going to leave the iterations to 10, but you can play around with these numbers to change the effect you want. Now, the main thing I need to do is make sure that all these points are inside the sphere. So, with a matrix selected, I'm going to go back to the MoGraph menu, and I'm going to bring up a plane effector. I'm going to rename it to Plane Setup, because I'm setting up my points. And I'm going to use this setup with a parameter of Z. So, let's zero out the Y and go to the Z. And with my cursor in here, I'm going to use my down arrow to just move them inside the sphere until the last ones go in. And you can see around minus 14, somewhere like that works. Now, I can go and turn off the sphere because I don't want to see it. And you can see that nothing particular happens yet. So the next step is go and start moving them inside and outside. And again, I'm going to select the matrix and go and add another plane effector and uh, this time again I'm going to set the Z to a value of 20 and uh, for this value over here I'm going to mask it by adding a fall off in the form of a random field and I'm going to go down here and add a random field. 
Now, if you go and set the animation to 500, because I want it to animate quite fast, and increase the scale, you will see that these are going to start changing the way they are being randomized. And this is the motion of these points, which I'm going to use as a reference. And throughout my project, I'm going to change these numbers to adjust them to whatever I want. But the fact of the matter is that we have some moving points. So now I'm going to go and create my final sphere. And I'm going to set this again to icosahedron. I like the topology. But this time I'm going to set the segments to 250. So it's quite dense. In order to move the points of this sphere, I'm going to bring it down and name it Sphere 1 High Res. I'm going to go and add a target effector. I'm going to make it a child of the sphere because I'm going to use it as a deformer in points mode. Now, nothing's going to happen yet because I need to tell the effector that the target mode, what it's going to target, is not an object, but it's the points we're going to find in a field. And actually, it's not even the points. It's just the values of a field. So set this to field direction. Now, the other thing you need to do is to activate the repel. And the repel is going to access the points of this object. Let's move on now to the actual object that's going to create the repulsion. In the falloff, I'm going to drag my matrix as not a MoGraph object, because the MoGraph object in a field list brings in the weights of the MoGraph object. I want to bring it as a point object. Now, let me make a slight digression at this point. A matrix object, although it's a MoGraph object, internally, it's just a set of points. So Cinema 4D has the ability to see it as a point object, an object that has only points and no polygons or edges. And that's why we're going to use point object. So activate point object, and immediately you see this horrendous thing happening. So first of all, let's remove the value and just make it work with the direction, because the target effector predominantly uses direction. And if I select this, just make sure in the direction, the length is set to use value. Now, if we go to the effector, I can use this value to control how much it's going to repel. So you can see now that this effect is quite different from a simple displacement, because it moves from each point and not in the normal direction. Now, if I go and press play to see this animation, you can see that uh, many weird things are happening. The most obvious thing is that when one of these matrices goes above the surface, it's actually pushing the points inwards. And of course, that makes sense because it's outside the object. It's going to push them in the opposite direction. At this point, you can go to the plane setup, go to the parameter and just move them further in your object so that we have none of the objects outside. Or you can go and control this plane and make the actual value it's moving up and down a bit different. Once you've stabilized this part, so nothing goes inwards, you can go to the target effector and increase the distance to create the size of the bubbles you wish to have. And you can see it's quite interesting. Don't worry about these jaggies here. We're going to fix them quite soon. So you are going to adjust how these bubbles are going to move in and out by changing the parameters of the plane, the plane setup, and the target distance repulsion. Now let's go and make this a bit more tame. Let's go and make sure that it has no jagged edges anywhere. And what I found works really nice in this particular case to solve these problems is to go and add one of our new smoothing deformers, but not this one, but the Delta Mush. This deformer is predominantly used for character animation to create nice smooth surfaces when you have overlaps in um, elbows and uh, armpits and stuff like that. But we are going to use it just to smooth our mesh, make it a sibling of the target, and go and make sure when it's selected that the smooth view is on. And the reason is, if it's off, you may start seeing some artifacts. In this particular case, they're not 
very visible but you may see some polygons just fly out so just turn the smooth view all the way up to 100% and you can see now that the model is quite nice and smooth and it's still very very performant and you can see the nice little bubbles so once you've done this you can just go and play again with the plane setup the values or the plane value itself to push things up and down so that you get exactly the shape of the bubbles you want at this point what I want to do is make sure that this rotates as well I want these bubbles to move around and to do that the best thing you can do is get the sphere and rotate it because it's the source of the points now for some odd reason if I rotate the sphere here nothing will happen but if I go and add keyframes it will work so select the sphere go to the coordinates make sure you're at frame 0 and let's add a keyframe on the H rotation and I'm going to extend my animation to 180 frames and go to frame 180 and set this to 180 degrees and add a keyframe and to make sure that this is going to play at a linear speed right click on the H go to animation and bring up your F curve now if for any reason you can't see the F curve make sure your automatic is active or just go and drag the object you want in here so now with all the points selected so just click here and press command A and click on linear this guarantees a constant speed and I'm going to zoom out a bit because now I'm going to select the actual track select the track over here and in the attributes you'll be presented with the before and after and I'm going to set this to continue you can see now this black line goes all the way down and this one here is going to go all the way up when I switch the after to continue so now we have a rotation that goes on forever despite the length of my animation so everything looks quite good but there are a couple of things still we need to add so number one I want to be able to identify where these bubbles are because I want a different material or a different color up here and uh, to do that we do need to do something to the sphere we have to make it editable so select it press C on your keyboard and now the sphere is editable and the reason now we need it as editable is that we're going to create some vertex maps but we're not going to do it manually we are going to right click and go to the rigging tags and bring up what's called a tension tag this tension tag has multiple functionalities one of them is to create a stretch map which is going to give us in the form of a vertex map the vertices that have stretched so it's going to give us all the bubbles now there is no vertex map so you can go to the stretch map right here and make map and it's going to create this vertex map you can see it doesn't look good yet so select the tension tag deactivate the deformers make sure you fix the tension to the current tension so that it records the length of each edge and now when I turn these on and select this you will see that now it adds a value of 1 to all the vertices that have stretched where the edges from small have become bigger now let's go and smooth this out because the, this is on or off go to the tension tag and just increase the amount now the problem is that for me to see the vertex maps I need to select the vertex tag but I want to select the tension tag so let's go and create a material and apply it so just go down here double click create a material and I'm going to go to the color channel I'm going to turn off the reflectance and go to the texture and in the effects I'm going to add a vertex map click on this and drag this vertex map in here fantastic now I'm going to close this and I'm going to apply the material to the sphere and now I can select the tension tag and at the same time see the colorization which indicates the value of the vertex map if you go to the amount and start increasing it you will see that you can control the contrast of that tension that stretch map that's stored on the vertex map and therefore you can control the value that gets transferred depending on the amount of stretching 
So I'm going to put it somewhere around, I would say 25, and I can always go and change it. And you will see if I press play now, this adjusts depending on the bubble size, how much it stretches. Excellent. Let me rewind. If it doesn't update, just press A to force an update in your viewport and uh, continue. Now, there's one more thing we need to go and fix. And uh, before I do that, just so that I can see this better, I'm going to go to my material. And instead of using black and white, which is basically values from zero to one, I'm going to go over here. And with the vertex map already loaded in my texture, I'm going to go over here and add a colorizer. By default, the colorizer is going to apply a black and white gradient. So now I can go to the gradient and load a preset. The heat seems to work well. I'm going to remove the black and remove the white and just stretch out the yellow and the red. And I can see something which is a bit easier to manage, a bit easier to view what's going on. Now let's go down here and see what's happening. This is the final problem we're going to solve, and it's certain intersections. Because these bubbles actually inflate, there's a good chance that two neighboring bubbles are going to overlap. For most cases, that won't be a problem, but I'm going to show you how you can go and change that so we can avoid the overlapping. And it's based on a technique I developed in one of my previous videos. Uh, I think I'm going to link to that video if you want to go and see it. That was about cell packing, creating avoidance of cells. In order to do this, first of all, I'm going to take the sphere high res and I'm going to go and create an instance because this instance is going to be the final thing we are going to render. Let me turn it off for now. I'm just going to keep it there for the time being. Now select the sphere high res and go and create a volume builder and make the sphere high res a child of the volume builder. Let me pull out. Select the volume builder, go to the object, set this to something like five, but change the mode to fog. And what this does is it creates a fog volume where all the volumes that happen to be on the surface have a value of zero and one voxel in and the rest of the object is filled with ones. So anything on the surface will be zero and anything inside the surface will be one. And because inside the surface means that these two overlapping surfaces happen to be inside the volume because they intersect their own mesh, that means that we can use that as a way to make some sort of avoidance. The way I'm going to do it, so I'm going to turn this on, and I'm going to hide this, and now I'm going to activate the instance, which is just a copy of this sphere over here. And let me turn off the render as well. What I'm going to do is go to this sphere and add a smoothing deformer. Make it a child, and you can see everything smooths. I don't want to smooth everything. I want to smooth only those parts of the surface that intersect the surface itself, so the overlaps. So go to the smoothing, go to the fall off, and remember where is that data stored? It's actually the volume builder. Bring it in here as a volume object, and what you will see, I'm gonna go close, we don't have overlaps anymore. Let me just turn it off and on you can see that the maximum impact of the smoothing deformer occurs where the object intersects itself. And therefore, we've created a quasi-collision avoidance with the mesh itself. It doesn't fold on itself anymore. Fantastic. Just for good measure, I can go and add one more smoothing deformer and put it underneath. I'm going to change the settings of this so that it has a bit of a smaller effect. You can see it just smooths out a few of these things without affecting the rest of my mesh. And now I have this object, which animates, has bubbles, and does not intersect. From this point onwards, it's up to you to do whatever you want with this, and you can save an alembic if you wish. And as I said before, if you see any inconsistencies between where the data should be and where it is, just press A 
so that it updates. Maybe you need to press it a couple of times, but it's just a small priority issue that won't be a problem if you bake this as a Lembic. Talking about Alembics, let's go and save this as an Alembic file. So right click and bake as a Lembic. Now that the Alembic has been baked, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this material and drag it onto the Alembic. I'm going to cut it from this scene, open a new scene, paste it in, and you will see that we've lost the connection with the vertex map because I use the material from another object with the vertex map. So make sure you select the color, go in here, then go in the vertex map, and you can see it's empty. Just make sure you drag the vertex map over here. And now we can have a near real-time playback of our bubble deformer. What are you going to do with this? It's up to you, but this is the technique. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. So don't forget, share, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and keep an eye out for more tutorials. And always remember, Noseman Knows. Man knows.